rolling. All right, one, two, three. Welcome to SecurityGuyTV.com. What's your name? Hi, my name is Ashley Hernandez, and I'm with Guidance Software. Guidance Software, you're not going to know this, right? Okay. Because you're too young. But I was using Guidance Software like in 96. All right. We had a case at Fox Studios. Okay. Uh, Guidance at that time did one sector searches, and I hired a guy who programmed, we did some program. we were doing three or five sector searches, <laughs> and then he contributed to, to some open source code things you guys had back in the day. That's awesome. And end case became the standard. It's been the standard forever. And I just love the product. It's fabulous. So I go back that far. All right. Well, I don't go back as far, but I've been <laughs> with Guidance since 2003 yeah. when I was like 10. <laughs> and um, I've actually had a bunch of different roles. I currently uh, work in our technical product management group. Okay. Um, but I've been a trainer in security. I've done QA. I've done project management. Uh, so I have a long history with Guidance. I enjoy working there. Now, you seem very young to me. Well, compared to my white hair. <laughs> uh, how do you translate the training part to a cop who can barely use Quicken to balance his checkbook, uh, bust their hearts, they're not technical people usually, right? How do you sell that? How do you get that out there? How do you train that person? How do you bring them back, you know, bring them into the fold? So when we do training, we actually do it in person, okay. and you're able to pace it to the class. Um, it's very common to have a class with all different uh, skill sets, ages, oh, really? okay. backgrounds. Right. Um, so you'll have a law enforcement person right next to someone who's from corporate, next to someone who's trying to get a job in digital forensics out of college. Right. Um, and so we really approach it by first explaining uh, kind of the concept. So that engages folks who are maybe more in law enforcement of why do I need to do this? Why should I care? Uh, and then we break it down on how you would do all the individual pieces, which no matter if you're new to it or a law enforcement cop, like that is interesting to them, breaking down problems. And then we actually show them how to automate that. So you get it reinforced in three ways. Um, and typically, once you get a law enforcement person thinking of as a tool to investigate, they're able to go, oh, okay, like that's interesting. I want to learn more about that. What's Guidance uh, number one customer group? Is it uh, law enforcement? Is it private? sector security is a government what is it uh, so we actually have customers in all of those groups um, I don't know that I have an exact uh, distribution uh, but we have a large number of customers in government in law enforcement those are kind of more similar customer types okay right. and then we have corporations and we have um, you know more private sector or probably legal too firms, I guess a lot of legal stuff legal with our e-discovery tools yeah. um, so we have customers in all the different the different segments um, and we have tools specific for each of those segments oh, so interesting. while we do do forensic security that's a big portion of our right. business whether that's traditional law enforcement forensics or more security incident response uh, especially for corporations um, that's a probably three quarters of our business we also have a, a good portion of our business geared towards e-discovery as well but mobile Mobile's is where new, it's at especially for law how long has it been new for you guys so we well, we did have a mobile product a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away called Neutrino. Um, I was on the team that actually was part of sourcing like fishing bags to hold all those cables. I know everybody <laughs> remembers having a thousand cables. Um, and so we had Neutrino for a while. Um, but as the market changed, um, we weren't focusing on mobile for quite a while. We did oh, really? some smartphones, okay. we did Android phones, um, but our support had lagged. And we knew that um, we were getting requests and feedback from our customers that, you know, for law enforcement, caseload is shifting 90% is I mobile. I hardly use my desktop. Yeah, I mean, yeah. personally, I carry around my my iPhone. I'm a Mac girl. Yeah. Um, I carry around my iPhone and my life is there. And so right. is it for most people. Right. Um, and I do most of my business off of my phone as well. So not just for personal law enforcement crime reasons, but also for corporations. Legal risk is on those phones, you know, and so mobile's a huge amount of our casework. Right. So what's the thing? What do you do now for them? What's, I mean, what's your new? All app? right. So we just came out uh, with a new release uh, this quarter. Uh, it's actually available for pre-sale, but it's coming out of NCASE Mobile Investigator. Um, I like the way that sounds. Right? We like the investigator word. Yeah. Um, but for our current customers um, who own NCASE Forensic or NCASE Endpoint Investigator, they're able to take advantage of mobile acquisitions across all the smartphone types um, and other devices, as well as things like JTAG and binary files that they might have, or even importing from other uh, mobile cases they have into NCASE 
uh, included for all of the forensic and endpoint investigator users. The new product, NCASE Mobile Investigator, is an additional add-on that's really geared at mobile investigation. So okay. uh, some of the great kind of key standout features that it has um, are some amazing reports, because really, you don't care what you can find unless you can show it to someone. That's true. <laughs> yeah, they don't. <laughs> Got to start there. Right. <laughs> Um, other kind of unique features is we go ahead and when you pull in the uh, acquisition data from any of your phones, uh, you're able to go ahead and um, sort all of that into different categories. So if it's a case that's just images uh, or images and multimedia. Which is difficult to sort. Right. Yeah. You, it'll process that up front into a couple categories and you can choose just export all the images and export all the multimedia files or export all the images and multimedia files I've reviewed and found to be, you know, uh, noteworthy yeah um and then another feature that's interesting is the ability to do ocr on images oh it's on images oh. yeah so if you've ever gone to i go to ikea this store is where i can never remember what i want so i just take a picture of all those tabs yeah. of a22 b17 um ocr allows you to actually extract the text out of those tab out of oh, those pictures of the image. That's out fabulous. of the images wow and if you think about how many people use i'm using ikea but also i write myself notes or sure you have a meeting on a blackboard or a whiteboard not a blackboard anymore a whiteboard <laughs> that's right <laughs> uh you take a picture of the notes if you can transcribe that into text right. uh, using ocr then you can actually search it which is part of the indexing that happens uh as an option for processing now i i probably doesn't do this but i want you to put this in your next development uh, release, I like okay? ideas. So what would be really cool is if I if I was a corporation and I, I'm uh, I'm paying for your phone, I want to put in case mobile investigator on your phone now. And so everything you do, I just get sent a report and I got the forensics before I need to go look for them. What do you think? So I think that there are going to be corporations that want to put more on the phone. Uh, one thing we can do is there's uh, programs that you run on your phone that store all that information in the cloud. Right. So even with this current version, we can go ahead and pull off those repositories. Google Drive, Facebook. Oh, that's good. Uh, so those are actually available if you're using oh, those as productivity tools. So you just set those tools. up as separate drives in the investigation. Yeah. Oh, interesting. All right. So um, that's an option. The other is, um, depending on the phone, they kind of work in the ways where each app has its own little world that outside doesn't necessarily see into. So um, you want to make sure that when you're running, uh, you're kind of keeping everything safe and protected. So running an app that would do security, we could probably do things like uh, call logs and text messaging. Um, anything you did with email, you'd still have on your exchange server. I guess if it went into the cloud, you could your software could run up there and just sort exactly. it all now and get it all ready Most to go. Most of the data is not yeah. stored on the phone anymore. So what yeah. we want to go towards is like, where is the data that you're looking for actually stored? If it's on the phone, yeah, we want it off the phone. But if it's actually in the cloud or anywhere else that apps store it, then we want to get it from there. Can, uh, can I buy this to keep track of my son's phone? Or is it too expensive? Do I need to be a, an enterprise platform? Um, so you wouldn't buy this to keep track of your son's phone. We don't actively run on the phone. We actually, you know, you plug the phone physically in. No, I know, but I mean, could I, could I get oh, the software wanna... to, to do that? Or... Um, so right now, the way that you would purchase it is you would buy, like, a single copy of NCASE Forensic, and then you can add on the mobile investigator. Oh, I see. Okay. So it's actually it's an add-on to very smart marketing uh, tool. That is part of how I we're doing it for now. you got to buy one to get the other. Very clever. Yeah. So it is only available to <laughs> NCASE right. Forensic and Endpoint Investigator customers. Now, I saw some other things out here. I, yeah. I, I can't speak intelligently about it, but a lot of people at this show are an NCASE what affiliate add-on you know what explain that so we have partners and other um vendors here who we work with one of the things that we've really done as a strategy or as a, as a company is we want to be able to work with other companies um that can be anything from we have our own api language called nscript that some folks have written into oh, okay um to actual partnerships with things like our security tools so you're going to see uh things like reversing labs here or other security partners that, yeah, yeah. um when we have our endpoint security product we actually announced endpoint security 601 here um part of what makes that awesome is we have APIs available. Excuse me. We have APIs that are available that other partners can take advantage kind of, of. Open source, kind of. It allows them. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's, it allows them to say, "Hey, if your customer owns our product and your product, we can talk between them and add extra value to all what right. we find." So we have our products, uh, our agent that runs on all of the systems on 
you know, tens of millions of computers. Right. And it'd be great to be able to, you know, check those for security or That's other good. items. And so opening up that API helps. And I saw some other, I thought there were other Encase products. Was I wrong? There is. There's yeah. a new Tableau product, the Tableau, TX1. What's that? Okay, so the TX1 is amazing. It's a brand new uh, imager. Um, and it actually is able to do simultaneous images at the same time. So oh. if you're uh, law enforcement and you go out in the field and you find three thumb drives, you don't have to, you know, one at a time, acquire right. them each. In addition, it can do um, hashing and encryption all while it's doing the acquisition. So you don't have to wait this whole extra time? amount of time. I remember yeah. back in the day, we bought this little yellow box and you plugged <laughs> the hard drive and you closed it and you plugged it in and it did kind of one thing at a time. But so this is the same old fashioned concept, but you're doing you're, you're, you're multitasking. Exactly. All at you once. can do two processes at once. Same, so saves a lot of time. It does save a lot of time. And then on top of it, we're taking more formats of input than we've ever taken before. You know, Such not as? just not just USB three, but SAS, FireWire. Um, oh, okay. You know, PCIe. Yeah. All of the different types. Network how, in. How about going backwards? I have saved. I shouldn't have gotten rid of it. I had a, a Televideo eighty eighty eight computer, not two eighty six three six eighty eight. Okay, yes. that's how slow it was. <laughs> it took 50 minutes to count to a million, right? Wow. Uh, but I kept around those old, I still have the floppy drives. I still have some old tape drives. I say, are you on tape? <laughs> uh, no, I do. I, have, I still have stuff backed up on tape. Can you go backwards with your stuff now and some of that legacy stuff, you know, it's still around. It might, 20 years later, hey, wait a minute. Uh, we found the tape of OJ doing the, <laughs> doing the murder. We better, let's play it. Oh, no, we don't have a cable. We can't do it. So there are some adapters for our Tableau line okay. of products. Um, TX1 is not going to necessarily have all of those older uh, connectors. Right. Part of it is they're just not manufactured anymore. It's if hard you wanted to, find, to add them, there might be some device around. It's, it's hard. So yeah. we do have adapters for some of our okay. Tableau products for those kind of specialty, uh, specialty needs. All right. Um, another cool thing about uh, the Tableau product is you don't just have to get the image off. You need to write it somewhere. And now we're doing 10 gigabit out. Whereas, you know, most wow. in the industry are doing one gigabit out. Yeah. So <laughs> this is like, you know, lightning fast plus fast to, yeah. to copy it off. Lewis, maybe we can uh, stream Security Guy Radio with 10 gigabytes. That would be nice. So it doesn't doesn't uh, <laughs> hiccup all the time. I'm so excited about this stuff. It's so good. I know. It, the response has been amazing. Our booth for mobile and Tableau, people who get their hands on them yeah. are really excited. Yeah, it's and overflowing it's just been over there. Great. It's great. I know. What's, uh, what's on the drawing table? On the drawing table, I mean, you're going to continue to see updates for us uh, for mobile and for Tableau. Um, those are some of the things that we've announced. On forensic, um, we are having people sign up for a beta. We're going to be increasing the speed of our processing by introducing a new index engine. All right. So um, they can go to guidancesoftware.com beta dash program, um, and they can sign up if they're a forensic or endpoint investigator customer. We're really excited to increase speed, not just on our imaging side, yeah. but also on processing. Uh, end to end, we know how important it is. You got to get the mobile data. You got to get it fast. Towards that. Got to process it. Um, so I'm really excited this year about what we're offering. Ashley, thanks for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. Give us your website one more time. Uh, it's www.guidancesoftware.com. That's for guidance. Uh, I know a lot of people think of it as ncase.com, but we are uh, guidancesoftware.com. Is it still ncase.com? Uh, I think NCase does redirect. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, and it probably also GUID.com probably works as well. That's our short short name. Actually, thanks for coming on Security Guy TV, SecurityGuyRadio.com. I appreciate it. Thank you so thanks much. Thanks so much.